The Qatara Depression is a depression in northwestern Egypt, specifically in the Matra Governorate. The depression is part of the western desert of Egypt. The Qatara Depression lies below sea level and its bottom is covered with salt pans, dunes, and salt marshes. It was created by the interplay of salt weathering and wind erosion. Some 20 kilometers west of the depression lie the oases of Siwa in Egypt and Jagbub in Libya in smaller but similar depressions. The Qatara Depression contains the second lowest point in Africa at an elevation of 133 meters or 436 feet below sea level, the lowest point being Lake Asal in Djibouti. The depression covers about 19,605 square kilometers, 7,570 square miles, a size comparable to Lake Ontario or twice as large as Lebanon. Due to its size and proximity to the shores of the Mediterranean Sea, studies have been made for the potential to generate hydroelectricity here. With the Qatara Lake about 60 meters below sea level, the size will be 12,100 square kilometers and the volume of 227 cubic kilometers. With a lake of that size, the net evaporation was estimated to be 5 millimeters a day, 700 cubic meters a second. That's about the continuous flow of 10 water tunnels to achieve the equilibrium of the intake and vapor water. Cotara Depression would start filling with water and quickly form a small Cotara Lake, which would gradually spread. We could pump about 20 cubic kilometers of water every year. Eventually, new technologies for the reduction of water vapor could be used. A modular floating cover stops evaporation by preventing the dry ambient air from contacting the water in the pond. However, even without any vapor, it would take 10 years to reach the target water level. The process will slow as the size of the lake increases, so let's say that we'll dig 10 to 12 tunnels to make sure that we will achieve the lake volume goal within 20 years. That makes the initial investment about 5 billion US dollars. Would you like to know more about this artificial lake? No problem. We'll continue with this topic, but before that, please subscribe to our channel. It will only take a second, but it will mean a lot to us. Thank you. Well, let's get back to our topic. Even if the lake is built and filled with water and remains sustainable, what are its benefits for the environment and the living world? There are several benefits. One, the lake with its final size will have about 2,000 kilometers of straight coastal line, which could be a smart model. If we make one kilometer habitable, that would create more area than occupies Cairo, the capital city with almost 10 million people. Just the increase in the value of the land would pay for the project multiple times. Two, not only that residential areas could be green using available fresh water, but Egypt made an interesting success using sewage effluent to grow a forest in a desert close to Ismailia. The same process could be replicated here all around the lake. That would allow the creation of a tropical forest in a large area all around the lake. Three, if the evaporation will be reduced by some of the floating covers, there'll be more water to spare for the irrigation of greenhouses, etc. Also, blocks of fish could be cultivated in the lake immediately. That would create an excellent source of nutrition for millions of people. And as the economy progresses, more tunnels could be built to provide extra water for plants. Four, Katara Lake will have up to 60 meters in depth. Large and deep lakes are heated more slowly than the land by day and cooled more slowly than the land by night, hence moderating the climate of a region in the same way as oceans. 5. In the long term, the water would be preserved in the area. The coastal area receives about 200 millimeters of precipitation per year, which is much more than further out in the desert area. By introducing the Inner Sahara Lake, we can expect that the zone with higher precipitation will expand. New rain would create a fast loop of watering plants and reduce the net vapor, so more water will be available for expanding the vegetation. Do you think it's possible to implement this project? Elon Musk plans to populate Mars, so why wouldn't it be possible to make a lake in the middle of a desert? In the 21st century, everything is possible, right? Although we admit that the project is very daring and unusual, we're sure that its organizers and developers will succeed in completing it. There's a comment section below, so feel free to write your thoughts there. We'll be happy to read it all. Don't forget to drop a like and share the video. Also, press the bell button to be notified when a new video is ready for watching. Have a great day and see you again soon.